Today we're going to be outdoors doing some plain air painting. Hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. Hello and welcome to a day, a beautiful day here in New York State. Uh, we're going to be doing some plain air painting and um, I'm from an area within uh, New York State where uh, you see uh, a lot of scenery as far as uh, you'll see a lot of farmland and old dilapidated uh, barns and busted silos and stuff. Uh, not that I live in a super rural area, it's just that you don't have to go far to see this kind of thing. And I've always seen a lot of this growing up, so I find this kind of scenery um, intriguing. And I call it, uh, I would call it almost, uh, you know, Americana in a way. So um, that's the kind of scene we're going to be painting today. Uh, let me show it to you. So there it is right there. That's what we're going to be looking at uh, while we're painting. And um, it's just a, uh, an old barn falling down uh, and it looks like a shed and there's some some uh, trees and stuff and growth all around it and that's what we're going to be filming or uh, painting. So one of the things that um, I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be trying to uh, paint in the uh, under the influence of John Carlson and John Carlson was a painter uh, uh, he died in like 1945, so he lived a long time ago, much before my time. But he lived in Buffalo, New York. I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. He uh, worked at the Albright Knox uh, Art Gallery. I've been to the Albright Knox Art Gallery. He um, uh, attended and worked for the New York uh, uh, Art League. I've also gone and taken some classes at the New York Art League. Uh, his name is John. My name is Ken. I mean, the similarities are uncanny. I mean, we almost, our, our lives are almost parallel, if you will. So, uh, in that vein, we are going to be uh, working under um, uh, his um, guidance, if you will. There is a book, this book right here, uh, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting, and this this is a book that I would recommend to anybody. In fact, many artists that I know that are friends of mine in the art world, or I should say in my art world, um, that, uh, that own this book, they've gone so far to say, as to say that this is their Bible. So, is there information in here worthy of considering it to be of a spiritual level? I would say yes. There is some great information in here. And just like, for example, chapter one. Chapter one is pretty much an introduction, an introduction into what... Uh, what John Carlson's going to uh, tell you about this book. And I have been told by my mentor and uh, uh, coach, uh, Stefan Bauman, he tells me every time I talk to him, shout out to you, Stefan, that uh, to paint what you see. And he told me that he got that from some old woman long time ago. Uh, she was a great painter and she, a little bit of traffic on this road, she was a great painter and she told him, paint what you see. And lo and behold, the very first thing Carlson even mentions in this book is to paint what you see. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. One of the things that uh, Carlson men mentions in his book, and it's uh, roughly around in chapter two, he goes over the paints, he goes over the canvases, and uh, he, when he mentions about canvases, uh, this size here, this is an 11 by 14 that I'm using, he says not to, if you're going plain air, not to go super large on your canvas, because it's hard enough for, especially a beginner, to apply paint to a canvas, let alone try to cover the uh, square footage, or you know, of, of a large canvas, you know, with paint, and to try to uh, 
paint something that or render something that's uh, going to be worthy of hanging in a gallery. So he recommends, you know, no more than, uh, no larger than a 16 by 20, nothing larger than that. So this is an 11 by 14, and uh, that's the size I like to kind of hang with. And um, so what we have here uh, for paints, uh, he mentions uh, titanium white, uh, cadmium yellow, or cadmium, I'm sorry, cadmium lemon, then there's cadmium yellow, and uh, yellow ochre. And then we have uh, cadmium red. Now he um, he mentions for a uh, for uh, another red, um, you can use uh, linzer and crimson for your dark red. But I'm going to use uh, rose matter for the darker red here. And I have some quinacridone magenta for the in between, the medium, uh, and it kind of gives it a purplish hue. But I really love the way that red mixes. Um, he uh, suggests Viridian Green, um, that's ultramarine blue, there's Prussian blue, there's the Burnt Sienna, I have uh, my uh, ever popular uh, Asphaltum that I like to use, and ivory, bla uh, ivory Black. He also mentions you can use Lamp Black. So we're also going to follow his, you know, his recommended colors for today. I don't know if I'll be using all of them for the scenery that we have today. I'll uh, see what we uh, see what we come up with. I'm going to be playing back and forth with the camera. I'll be uh, doing some close-ups of the canvas and I'll also be doing uh, just like this so, so I can uh, um, talk to you while I'm painting or at least be talking while I'm painting and you can still watch what I'm doing and so the very first thing I want to do is I want to capture just what it exactly is I'm going to paint. Now you'll notice that my canvas is like a mishmash of color here. Um, this canvas I am repurposing. This canvas, it was a landscape I was trying to do. I was trying to do something and you know I had some some tape that I was going to put on there and kind of use for the and then peel it off and have like a for water and so I uh, I changed my mind and decided that's not what I wanted to do so I just took some um, uh, burnt umber and uh, just went over the canvas with it and so I'm just gonna paint over everything on this so in the meantime I want to get my composition down exactly what I want what I'm what what keys you know what interests me and what I am interested in in painting is I really like the the dilapidated barn but I also like the foliage and greenery that's growing around it that that's what drew me to this particular scene right here so I want to capture that as best I can and uh, that's that's my that's what interested me and that's why I want to paint this scene. And Carlson mentions in his book that, um, you know, a lot of times we, we need to step back and really take a look at what it is that drew us to want to paint that scene in the first place. And a lot of times what ends up happening, he mentions that, you know, his students you know, they'll say something along the lines like, well, I, I wanted to paint those mountains, but, uh, you know, the greenery just kind of just took over. And he just suggests at that point just to, you know, paint another picture with the mountains and use the greenery as an accent. You know, so we don't want to lose interest or we don't want to lose focus on what exactly it is that we want to paint. And what I want to paint is I want to paint that barn. And I want to paint the greenery associated with it. So in a sense I got so I have tree. And there's tree. This is all tree. And there's tree right here that kind of I brought a white. Uh, 
charcoal. What is this? Is this, um, yeah, it's white charcoal. You know, try to help me see what I'm doing here. It's not really going on the canvas very good. But I brought it because I thought maybe it would help. It's helping a little bit. I can see somewhat what I got here. So, but just like anything else, you gotta you gotta draw it first. You can draw it with paint or a pencil. You know, um, I I'll, I do both. I have done both. So, and then there's looks like. This probably goes right about there. It goes in right about here. There. There. And we got some greenery here. There, and then we got some more. Greenery comes up here. Then we got a big tree here. So yeah. Okay. I think I got an idea as to how I want this to look. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm really liking this drawing. I know you can't see it. Um, so uh, I'm going to, you know, once I start getting some color in here, you'll, you'll be able to see it. But I'll, I'll zoom in on this, and you can kind of see the mishmash that I've made. And that's kind of what it is, it's just a mishmash. I mean, there's nothing. It's nothing like major majorly drawn in. There's no detail of any kind. So I'll uh, zoom in on this here. So here you can see how I kind of drew that in and then I'm going to proceed to paint some lines in Okay, so I'll start drawing in what I want to get in here, and I'll probably use um, I think I'll use the asphaltum. And I do I did bring my medium. I brought my I'm sorry, not my medium, but my mineral spirits, if you will. So hopefully you can see that. I'm not 100% sure if you can or not. here now uh, one of the things that um, Carlson talks about and he hits upon it in I want to say chapter 3 probably chapter 3 and uh, he talks about the values when it comes to nature and um, the thing that he mentions is that uh, the sky will always be your lightest value no matter what and um, even on a super cloudy day your sky will still be the lightest value in your in your painting and um, he he mentions that enough times to make you think that, you know, this is important. <laughs> so 
So there's some greenery growing there. Got some greenery kind of growing over some corners here and it kind of is giving the foliage some shape. So those are going to be some very dark values. Okay, so then he mentions the sky is the lightest color, the lightest value, always. The second lightest value is going to be your ground, your, like your foreground, um, because that is a flat plane and it is reflecting the uh, light from the sky. So that is going to be your second lightest value in your painting and your third value in your painting would be uh, uh, up the plains like like the mountains in the background uh, that will be uh, your third value and then your darkest value will be your trees because your trees are are horizontal and they do not reflect as much light as say you know the flat ground does so uh, he mentions that this is you know that's going to be your darkest value and you should paint accordingly you know always put in your you know these values the sky the ground the uh, mountains and then of course the, the trees. So, and then he also suggests starting with, you know, just your masses. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just, I'm just blocking in some, some masses here, you know, the trees, where they're going to be, and the buildings. So that's kind of, kind of what I'm doing. Quite a bit of traffic on this road, surprisingly, for, you know, like a do-nothing road. There's like nothing here. Okay, so there we go, that's there. Now, of course, this um, this rule that he was talking about, the values, uh, the sky being the lightest, and then your ground, and then your mountains, and then the darkest value being your trees. This rule, if you want to call it a rule, because, you know, it's not a rule rule, like you have to follow it completely. It just means that this is this is something you need to pay attention to while you're painting. And uh, he mentions that um, that this doesn't only applies to nature. So like these buildings, obviously if the building was painted white, that white would be a lighter value than my sky. So of course, of course then, that rule wouldn't apply. Okay, so there's all kinds of greenery in here and that. So this is, then there's this a bush right in here. Or it's a tree, actually. So I know this is just really just a mess. And that's how most all of my paintings begin as a mess. But at least, you know, I have an idea. I have an idea what I want here. That actually needs to come up. Okay, so that's there, and then this would be here. Oh, I'm already making adjustments here. Yeah.
Okay. So why don't we try getting some some sky value in there. That'll kind of give us an idea what we're working with here. And the brushes that I'm using are flat brushes. I prefer the flat brushes. So Carlson recommends uh, uh, some sable brushes and some bristle brushes, but you obviously are only going to use what you like to use you know over you know over a period of time you get used to a certain brush and how it works and that's that's what you end up using So I'm using the um, ultramarine blue and titanium white here for the sky color, but there are some clouds, so I will be changing that up, obviously, you know, for the to get the clouds in there. But you can see it's already mixing. I have um, that burnt, or was it the burnt umber on the that I put on here and it's it's already mixing with my blue so it's gonna make it kind of funky brownish blue color but that's not gonna be an issue we'll be able to we'll be able to work with all of this it's never going to be an issue. So I'm not really 100% sure how well this is showing up. I, I can barely see the screen on the camera. So uh, it's kind of sunny out here and it is affecting what I'm what I'm looking at here but I don't have the Sun hitting my canvas um, that is uh, kind of important when you're out plein air painting you do not want the Sun light hitting your canvas because it will affect your values uh, enough where um, when you bring it back inside you will be t very disappointed at how your painting looks so you want to pay attention to the sunlight and how it's hitting your canvas now you can see I'm already I'm quite I'm able to go over the areas that I've that I've already hit um, it's drying relatively quick there's a nice breeze out here so I'm very pleased with that fact because uh, you know it, it's it makes it easier to go over things so yeah I like that okay so we have that now my obviously this that's my lightest value it's going to be my sky so the next lightest value will be my foreground and it's going to be not much different in value to the sky it's going to be just as light maybe one shade off you know but that's about it So we have to pay attention to those values because we want, that's what's going to make everything in the painting look cohesive, is how we uh, hit those values. So 
So for the foreground, I'm going to use uh, my Viridian Green, uh, the Cadmium Lemon, and a little bit of Titanium White, and yeah, I'm liking, I'm kind of liking that a little bit. That's it's, it's a bright color. Uh, I would say it's pretty much the same value as the sky. So I might want to just darken that up just a touch. Because uh, we want it to be, like I said, like a value a shade off from our sky. So yeah, it'll, it'll look a lot nicer once I get the uh, this uh, painting from underneath gone. You know, then then it, I think what we're looking at will make a lot more sense. Uh, but I would prefer this over a blank white canvas um, because. The blank white canvas, it really, uh, it'll, it'll definitely play with your mind in a way where your values will not be correct because you'll still have that white of the canvas to contend with and it will not uh, allow you to see those values correctly. So it's always better to have a uh, canvas that is uh, toned to work with. Now our trees, so here's our value here. Now we don't have any mountains to, you know, to contend with here. So I'm going to say that my buildings, looking at the color of my buildings, that it's a old faded brown, you know, the wood is old and the paint, the stain what was on there is gone now. I'm going to say that is my going to be my third brightest value. Uh, there is some sunlight hitting the the shingles on this roof here. That's kind of bright, but um, it, the thing that uh, Carlson talks about is don't confuse your values with your accents and your highlights. Now your accents are going to be your darker areas within your valued ranges and your highlights are going to be all your lighter areas within your valued ranges. So just like in the sky you have it's your lightest value but within that value, you'll have accents and highlights. And that's what makes your painting interesting. So I would say that my third brightest uh, object or value is going to be the barn. My darkest value will be the trees. And I'm going to put those trees in now. And that will kind of give me an idea as to how to set up that value for the barn. At least in my mind, that makes sense. I don't know if it really does because I, I, a lot of times, I don't know until I try. So I'm mixing the Viridian Green. I'm mixing some of uh, the Ultramarine Blue in there to kind of darken it up a bit. Yeah, that makes a very nice dark green. And I'm just kind of getting some splashes in here. So like this tree here needs green. This tree here is all tree right here. I'm also putting in a little bit of ivory black to help darken that up a bit. Okay. 
So yeah, it's a beautiful day today. Uh, I was pretty anxious to uh, get out of work and uh, get the painting. And uh, yeah, so they were talking about potentially raining today, but it seems like it held off, so that's good. So I'm, I'm dipping into my mineral spirits to loosen up the paint kind of so I can just move it around a bit and uh, that's that's what I'm doing um, it seems to be it, it's helping but it's also what's happening is the breeze is causing the paint to uh, dry and that's fine because then it just makes like I said it makes it easier to go over the top of that you know when when I need to especially when we're doing the accents and the highlights so yeah there's all kinds of So I'm still uh, covering the canvas and really all you're seeing here is me putting in, I'm just blocking the masses in basically, it's really all I'm doing. And once those masses are in then we can start, you know, playing with those and kind of given some life to them if you will so here the foreground there's like a whole oh, like a area of like little bushes and weeds and preambles of stuff that kind of the foreground comes up to and meets it and that's kind of what I'm trying to paint in here. Okay. All right, so there we have uh, my trees my bushes, my foreground, my sky. Now our third lightest value is going to be the barn and the shed. Which it's like two barns really. So we're gonna work on that. I just need to determine, so it's kind of like a grayish color. So If I mix some ivory black in with the sky color that I mixed, maybe uh, add a little bit of asphaltum to that. Kind of gives me like a grayish, grayish color, and that would be almost perfect. the barn. And then I'm going to have to th take a look at the values here. So I would say yes this is a lighter value than naturally my trees are. So that's what I want. So that's good.
this is a the way the sun's hitting this side here is a little bit lighter. And So I, I'm, I'm hoping that what you're seeing, you're starting to see the picture arrive, you know, or at least turn into what it is that that I'm I'm seeing in front of me. Uh, you should be able to see the barn, and, and it should all start, you know, look like it's making some sort of some sort of sense here. Do have some, like I said, some barn showing through some of this uh, greenery that's growing up here. Okay, so yeah, we're kind of so I'm kind of I left this area a little bit lighter because the sun is hitting this spot of the roof up here, so that is uh, an area that's being affected, and uh, we have a lot of soft edges here. I think that's really going to make this look nice. So I think you're starting to see what I'm trying to go for here. Now we can start. Uh, playing around with, uh, you know, our masses and start concentrating on what's going to make those masses three-dimensional and, you know, uh, what areas are dark, which areas are light, you know, so we're going to work on our accents and our highlights and uh, so, and, and uh, we'll all go back and forth between things. Obviously the sky, there's clouds in the sky, so we can definitely play with that so let's clean our brush off here so we're not getting you know, too much. I do like to clean off my brushes a lot. I don't like to muddy my paint up too much. Gotta work around these little tabs here. Okay, so we have a real bright area right in here from the sky. I like that, that's nice. Nice bright effect here. I like that. That sky through the tree now. What's going to help this tree here, this tree is like, to me, the, what I'm looking at, this tree is very dark in value, but 
there's a lot of sky holes that would give this tree that look of being a tree. Now the sky holes, we want the sky holes to be lighter. So we're going to see if we can Now notice I'm just, there's like no rhyme or reason to my sky holes. I'm just, we don't want anything to look like it's, uh, like there's a pattern. I think what would help is the thing that remember the tree is always going to be your darkest value and that's because the horizontal lines do not reflect the light from the sky like everything else does it just doesn't capture it so what we can do is we can take a real dark color so I'll use my asphaltum and I'll mix that with some ivory black and we can use that to uh, put in some some tree branches and things. So you can see, uh, I'm going through some of the sky holes, and it's kind of highlighting a little bit of this at the same time. So it kind of, it's really making a nice, a nice effect, I think. I really won't know for sure if I like it till you know, later when I'm staring at it. You know, sometimes I'll just look at something and go, hmm, this doesn't look right anymore. Get some dark in there. Remember this. Like I said, this is very dark against the, um, you know, the sun, the way the sun is hitting things here. It's just got, this is not, there's not a lot of bright areas here, but there's a, those sky holes. I want to make sure I get those in there. I'm just going over those sky holes again. Okay, so the sun the, the sun is hitting a little bit right in here. You can almost like get some highlight in there a little bit. like a some green right here
again this is we're just hitting the we're now we're working on the accents and the highlights within our masses that's really what we're doing here There's a lot of a lot of foliage growing growing here. bit of that barn coming through. Gotta keep some of that. Sun is highlighting the tops of this right here. Looks great. So then there's a, some lighter value uh, shrubbery here. Okay, so let's uh, let's hit some of the trees over here. We got. Clean off my brush. So hopefully uh, what you're seeing is, you know, it looks, it looks okay on the camera, I'm hoping. Can't, I'm starting to see the screen a little better. It looks like it's not too bad. Okay, we have a lot of dark right in here on the top of that roof line right there. A lot of dark in there. A lot of dark over here. And then right in here is uh, some dark. And there's like a real dark area over here. It's like something is off in the distance there. Definitely hitting some of this tree line area here. You gotta kinda give the impression that there's leaves and things. You know, it's, it's trees. Yeah, we gotta 
mixed in with my sky. That's fine. It's fine. I don't mind that. Okay, let's see if we can get some. We got some accent in there. Let's get some highlights. See here. There is some awesome looking highlights tops of some tree line here. Sun is hitting, hitting some of that greenery right here. this nice bush right in front of the barn here it's kind of it's just it's it's a tree I'd say it's a small tree some we got some highlights over here got some real nice real nice patch of light green over here then we got some dark that dark in there I'm really loving the way this is coming out. This is coming out great. It's looking good. I'm surprised, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm surprised. It's a lot of times uh, when I come out do plain air, I'm usually never happy with what I'm what I'm working with. So yeah, this is really coming out nice. Uh, and you know, I gotta thank John Carlson because I'm really following just you know his guideline as far as how to paint a painting you know outdoors with nature you know to put in your masses and then work on your highlights and your accents it's really it's really all I'm doing here so I'm gonna leave these uh, 
trees alone and let's work on the nuances on the bar I mean there's like there's some holes and some I mean there's some stuff going on here Get some dark in there. Okay, so there's like a there's a window. Right? Here. There's like a board missing, and there's like a spot right here. And there was used to be like some sort of existing roof line that's been tore out. It's not there anymore. It was right there. not there anymore but there's a remnants of this there and of course the planks are horizontal so we kind of got to give that effect and there is some shadowing. I mean, we're talking some. There are some lines here. You gotta get those in. Same with this, there's like a definite shadow. Oh man, there's there's all kinds of things missing on this roof. There's like spots. There's a very dark area right in here.
Hmm. So I got some dark areas, I got some light areas. Gotta get all that in there. Now this... This spot right here. It's gonna get me in trouble right here. I gotta get the edge of that barn in there. There's some great color right here. Like some this red. A barn red that's still there. Maybe I can get some of that deep red in there. There you go. Okay, I need to bring this barn out. It's not, the light, it's not there now, but it was. That light, sunlight was hitting this roof pretty brightly. So I gotta put some up there, cause that really made this, you know, kind of, it kind of brought it forward from the bigger barn behind it. So, yeah, I'm liking that. Liking that, liking that. But same with this corner though. It, I need to. Well, the way I'll do that is I'll have to put some dark. This is going to have to get dark in here. That's what's going to have to do it. There. But I got to want to keep that barn color back there. So, I should take a picture of what it is that I'm painting, so that way I can come back to it, you know, maybe uh, in the studio, maybe if I see something that's, uh, did that so yeah 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 I'm, I'm liking it I'm really liking the way this is coming out it's coming out good okay so here's the darker foliage you know this shrubbery and stuff that was kind of that's in front of this foreground you know the grass foreground grass comes up to it kind of what's going on here. So there's, and there's, you know, there's things in here. So you kind of see I'm, I'm just accenting a few things here. 
highlighting a few things, kind of giving it some life, if you will. Because, you know, there's, there's bushes and things in here, but you, know, you got to show that. You got to give it some character. I mean, just because things are in shadow doesn't necessarily mean that it's gone, you know, and that you can't see it. See, now there's a tree right in here that I do not have showing. So I could probably get that in here. Okay, maybe. All right, so now I'll just kind of soften this, the edge of the foreground so it kind of blends in, comes up to this, because it's kind of, it kind of does, it just kind of goes in there and this bush just takes it over. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's a great old Americana scene, you know, old rustic barn falling apart within, you know, it's got all kinds of stuff growing around it, and, uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with this. So there you go. Uh, I'm quite happy with how this painting came out, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you uh, would like to see more like this, uh, definitely leave uh, leave some comments in the comment section below and let me know. Also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you're always notified whenever I post a new video, and I'll see you on the next one.